Welcome back to Pathfinder, Wrath of Righteous, where we have apparently been ambushed by Darren in our bedroom. The air is filled with a spicy, heady fragrance and steam gently rises from the bathtub. Darren is perched on the lip of the tub, holding on with both hands for balance while lazily swinging one leg. His face is the picture of innocence. Ah, my dear commander, you are just in time. I took the liberty of lo looking after your well-being and have prepared everything you need for a relaxing bath. Bathing for pleasure is most therapeutic indeed and is essential for healing rest and sound sleep. What is that sweet smell? Herbs from mountain meadows. I know many professionals prefer, prefer to add scented oils, rose petals or foam to a hot bath, but I choose herbs. They are simply superior in every respect, and they inspire thoughts of freedom. Your attempts to please me are commendable. You may continue your efforts. You are the most amazing creature. What I mean is, next to your outsized ego, my self-regard seems almost modest. I find that... Darren half smirks. Adorable. Anyway, he rises to his feet. It's time for me to go. I shall leave you alone with this vessel of bliss. A rather dreadful turn of phrase, I admit, but what else am I to call a hot bath in the middle of this grim stone fortress? You could stay. I could. Darren lowers his eyelashes and takes a pause. But I won't. Have a nice soak. You deserve it. With a slight bow, Darren leaves. Oh god, it's not her. Commander, upon hearing word of your victory in the Battle of Dresden, many leaders in Alistan have considered taking a more active supporting role in the Crusade. Fighting demons in the name of saving the world is a prestigious endeavor, especially when the war is going well. The one whose help is accepted first will increase their standing in the political arena, which is why the powers are now competing for the right to conclude an alliance with Mendev before their rivals do. Nerosian has already chosen which of them is to be favored, Isger. We've been building an alliance with that nation for a long time, and now the capital is expecting you to address the steward of Isger with an official offer to support you. Last Wall is Mendev's most trusted ally. If we are to ask someone for support, it should be them, the Shining Crusade. Let's say we invite the Sword Lords of Brevoy to this party. The uh, righteous Mendevian knights just love those hot-headed provincials who will draw their weapons and challenge you to a duel at the drop of a hat. And get this, they win such duels. Nerosian will be ecstatic to have allies like these, and I hope the demons will enjoy the company as well. Just as a note, we happen to have a neighbor who's barely got any presence in the crusade. I'm talking about Numeria. It is believed to be too wild and barbaric to have any dealings with. How about we show everyone how wild and barbaric tribes can fight and invite them to play a bigger part in our war? Everyone who wanted to come because they listened to their heart are here already. Time to call those who listen to their purse. We'll drop a line to the Varesian cities. Tempt them with some nice spoils and loads of savvy folks will come running. Why does Nerosian decide whose help I should accept? Because you are, with all due respect, one of Her Majesty's subject. Lady Konomi's voice grows sterner, but after a moment subsides into a more confiding tone. And because it took great effort for Mendev's diplomatic call to win Isger over and ensure you would receive their help. Are you confident that the allies you choose yourself will be as reliable? We get Inquisitors. 
for lot from last war. Sword lords, we get duelists. Numeria, we get barbarians. Parisians, we get rogues. And Isger, we get sorcerers. I'm not really sure. Most of our army is going to be uh, comprised of uh, undead anyway. I think the sorcerers is the most relevant one here. So, Lady Konomi, I am willing to accept Isger's aid. Your wisdom never fails you. Nerosian will be pleased to know you are not squandering allies whom they have taken such pains to attract. The battle sorcerers of Isger, hardened in the clashes with goblins, will serve you well. I won't detain you any longer, Commander. When matters of foreign or domestic politics once again require your attention, I will convene the Diplomatic Council. Hail, Commander. Captain Harmattan salutes. Permission to report. Although the desertion has been halted, not everyone appreciated your methods. A circle of discontents formed within the officer's rank, calling themselves the wary. There are no blatant signs of sedition, otherwise they would have been arrested. Still, their talk is concerning. We can't rely on them. We need our own trusted officers. I suggest enlisting some of the volunteers. We get some very capable fighters among the fresh blood every day, the kind that could be made to sergeants straight away. We need those who know the meaning of honour. We'll call paladins and knights from reputable orders, and they'll serve as an example to our soldiers, boosting everyone's morale too. Officers who are unworthy of their rank can always be replaced. We can identify experienced sergeants with reliable records of results, then promote them. Mendev is full of promising youths who were overlooked when their seniors were promoted to serve in your army. You can call them here, award them rank, and they'll be grateful to us until the end of their days. This gives us pious officers. That increases the infirmary by 10%. Plus one level to the striving for distinction feat. Plus one level to the master of maneuver feat. That is, that is just a given, actually. Yep. We're going with uh, Darren's choice here. Darren, call your bright youths. Perfect. Let's give these youngsters a chance. They'll be sure to prove their worth. And there will finally be someone in Dresden to discuss Mendevian news within the evening. The Master of Maneuvers is another uh, troop in the army, which is uh, massive that all generals could plus one to that. I hope that these measures will solve the issue at hand. If we have further complications, I will call them the council at once. You see a Kellit, around 50 years old, dressed in a doublet that looks older than its owner. Once it may have been expensive, but now it is worn and patched. A scabbardless sword hangs on his belt, covered in such a thick layer of rust that it looks more like a club. His flushed, swollen face, spongy nose, and the dark circles beneath his eyes suggest that he is a heavy drinker. When he opens his mouth to speak, your suspicion is confirmed by the stench of stale alcohol on his breath. So, you're the commander, huh? It's a cozy little place you've got for yourself here. All these walls, polished furniture, solid, commendable. Why, I think I'll give you a medal for this. A medal? You're too kind. Don't mention it. I'm a generous soul, but I'm also fair. I dish out medals as, and I punish as I please. Who am I? Not just your average citizen. The man groans as he straightens up, affecting a proud noble bearing insofar as his decrepitude allows. You will be pleased to know that I am Thaberdeen Quintissimus Hierophanto, rightful heir to the throne of Eyes and all Sarkoris. Everyone knows that no king has ever ruled over all Sarkoris, and there is no throne in Eyes. How would you know? Have you been to Eyes? Have you seen it with your own eyes? You haven't. And if you haven't, maybe there was one. 
My pops used to tell me about the throne in all in the palace. It was gold all over, and it was encrusted with all manner of um, crusty things like diamonds and fire ants and rubies and boobos. Couldn't take your eye off it. Eyes off it. That's what kind of a throne it was, and it's all mine, mine by right. What do you think you are entitled to? We are simple people. We don't need much. I mean, no, that's not what I meant. We are simple people, not simple at all. And we need a great deal. A king's palace, a throne, lands. But all that can wait until you take back eyes and make the demons leave. As for now, I wouldn't mind having a king's residence here in Dresden. A place to sleep and some hot food. That would be a start. Can you prove your claim to the throne? Of course. We are just some swindlers. We have all the evidence. Here, look. He takes the rusty sword from his belt and shows you the hilt, which features a nearly worn-off golden crest. The grinning animal it depicts most closely resembles a shabby possum. Here, the royal Smilodon is the ancient symbol of the rulers of Sarkoris. I've also got a wart on my chest, in the shape of a crown. Of course I'm the heir to the throne. And for those who don't believe me, well, they can get lost, that's what I say. Let them go to Pelora's Fall, where all the Knights of Sarkoris are buried. There, my entire family tree has been written in stone. Go and read for yourself. Pelora's Fall? What's there? I deaf or what? You could... You should drink a pine needle infusion. It'll do wonders for your ears and your eyes too. I'm telling you, all the dead Sarkorian kings are in the ground there. In mausoleum, tomb burials, and those... What should I call it? Obelisks, that's right. And it's all written there about my ancestors and about me too. Just go look and everything will make sense. By every law of the land, I'm king. I see. Soldiers, throw this imposter out of here. Hey, hey! Why, how could you? Ah, some commander you are. That would probably have been amusing if I was a trickster. Probably use some illusion magic or something to make him believe he was in a massive palace or something like that. Okay, ahead. so since I was ambushed by uh, Mr. You need a bath, uh, I need to do the uh, the selling stuff, but let's go to the inn because we need to speak to Sir Siar. Could be here, yes. The old crusader looks anxious and disoriented. Um, yes. Has something happened? Hand over Morveg's talisman. Morveg is dead. The color drains from Siar's face. He takes the straw figure with his shaking fingers. His mouth twists unpleasantly as if the old man is about to start sobbing. The Crusader's hoarse voice promised immediate and merciless reprisal. You? You killed him? Stop. It is more complicated than you think. The old man's face grows red as if his heart is about to give out. His voice, used to giving orders in the midst of battle, deafens you. Liar! The old man's knuckles crack as he clenches his fist around the talisman. I knew you were poisoned when I first met you. I knew you couldn't be trusted. How dare you raise your hand to that poor boy. The boy who knew no happiness or family love, who grew up in the dirtiest, worst kind of slums, fed on the tales of revenge he hoped to one day live up to. Ciar's voice sounds like a, the grunting of a wolf dying in a trap. I curse you, you dirty cur. You will have no peace in this world or any other. It wasn't for the war, I'd slaughter you right now, but by the Queen's order, you, Commander, are off limits. So I will wait for your dark doom to catch up to you. When it does, I will laugh at your suffering. I wonder where I had my last save game. Well, not far away. I'd rather like to pass that check. And I mean, rolling one, two, or three is really unlucky. Since the check was 28. And 
I was at... Hold on. Have I slept? No, I haven't. Okay, I need to go sleep, then do the Darren bath thing again. Here we go. The knight looks at you with horror. The old warrior drops to his knees, slowly and awkwardly, with apparent difficulty. My boy, but how? What happened? Enough sobbing, you old coward. The lad was a hero and gave his life for our victory. He got the mighty sword of Gorum for us. He was a child. A child who's never seen normal life. A child whose bedtime stories were bloodthirsty legends about the injuries done to his clan. A poor poisoned boy. The sword, that damned weapon of Gorum, where is it? Do you have it? It must be destroyed. The war devours our souls, and Gorum, its lord, watches over it all with indifference. It is a valuable weapon. I won't destroy it. The old man clenches his shaking fist like he's going to hit you, but can't. You. You don't understand. It is evil. This is war in the flesh, the devourer of life, soul, and conscience. It has already sunk its claws in you and taken your mind. That's more like it when it comes to what I wanted. But any other things? Not that. Not that. Not that. We need to remain and wait for the result of that. We need to go to Green Gates with Aru. This one will be later on. We probably should go here at some point. House of Death, we need to wait for that. And then, of course, it's the quest for Wuljif. Uh, and I still don't want to give her the sword. I mean, she'll give us 50,000 for it, so it's worth it in that sense. But the sword is just better as things are. Um, okay, let me figure out where we are going to go. Um, I need to sell stuff as well, so I'll go up to the uh, blacksmith and we'll sell stuff there. And I also need to check on um, whatever the person's name is again. Uh, Arsino. Um, Arsino would be selling the red salamander ring, but I don't think uh, she does. However, I think we can get a second copy of it somewhere else. Anyhow, uh, one moment, please. And as I was about to sell to Wilsir, he uh, suddenly tells me that he has a little something for me. Like Conjurer, Wilsir produces a fairly large purse from somewhere under his shirt. The lads decided to chip in. You've been taking care of us, Commander, so you, we decided to take care of you. Please take this gift. Get yourself a magic ring or a new helmet. We'll be very happy if you do. Um, thank you. It is from the bottom of our hearts, Commander. 5,000 gold. So, I'm a little bit uncertain about what to sell currently. Because I'm not sure what things I'm going to need for my... Uh, people onwards but I can sell the, uh, the tiny things at least I doubt I will be needing a, an orc double axe sixty four thousand so that's something uh, we'll keep the rest uh, I don't need that I also don't need that I also don't need this adamantine full plate because nobody else but Regil can wear it. Keep the other uh, armors around. And we also have to uh, level up our uh, companions. Let's see here. I were bothered leveling up uh, Greybore. Let's have a look. He's... Uh, Slayer. Uh, level 10. Mm. 
as well just give him the skills that he already has. Slayer Talent. Um, combat Style, Two Weapon Combat, Greater Two Weapon Fighting, probably. Level 11. Not Rogue, but Ranger, and then Freebooter. As for his feet, we should be giving him outflank. That's Greyboar. Then we have uh, Aru, which I have uh, in my uh, notes here. I don't think we'll take her with us right off the bat. Combat style feat at level 10. Um, improved critical and longbow, of course. Then demons of strength and continue the demons of magic. Level. 11 uh, Improved initiative Next up we have Regil Continue on the Blood Rager, both levels Um Change bloodline power for two rage powers, I think. Skills. Perception. We want animal fury and we also want reckless stance. As for the spells, uh, magic weapon and shield. Level 11. Blood Rager. And now I think it's basically irrelevant what we pick. Beat. Greater two weapon fighting. As for spell. Magic missile. That's Regil done with. And then we have Social. Probably the most simple one to level up. Because he only gets uh, feet every second level. Level 11, that feat should be improved critical. And Glaive. And we have... Well, let's see if we have any other main characters first. We do have Al Milana at level 10. I don't think there is anything except for the skill points to allocate. Then level 11, we have the skill points and the feet seize the moment. The horse belongs to her. Might as well level it up since that is on this specific sheet of paper. And blind fight. Now we also have Nenio. Who will be continuing on her path as a wizard on level 10. Level 5 spells. Um, thought Sense and Mind Fog. Do I already have Mind Fog? No, there it is. 
Level 11. We should take one level of Sorcerer. Cross-blooded. Continue with her skills. As for the feet, uh, skill focus, not spell focus. Skill focus, knowledge world. Then we are going to take... Draconic Bloodline Blue. Uh, greater Spell Focus Illusion. Draconic Bloodline Bronze. And this is not at all very relevant. But. Because this is a Sorcerer spell. Let's just take Grease. So that's Neneo. Then we have Ember. Her hex on this level should be Protective Luck. Level 5 spell. A feeble Mind. Level 11. Greater spell focus, evocation. Level 2 spells. Uh, litter dust is always useful. Level 3 spell. Mm, remove disease. Level 4 spell, I think, innervation. Yep, yeah, innervation. Level 5. Cave Fangs and then Camellia should be the last one. Uh, level 10 we should go back to Shaman. Level 11 should also be Shaman. Uh, we want to have improved critical with Longbow here. And as for her hex, Metal Curse. And I think she's the final one that we haven't leveled up, so that means it's only uh, Ethgao left. Level 7. We want Outflank. Level 8. We want to have one point in dexterity. And I think that's it. Yep. That's all of our party leveled up. Now let's go down and have a look at Arsino and if she does have the uh, the red salamander ring. I think we already confirmed that she doesn't, but still. Yeah, she has the Ring of Pyromania, which definitely is nice, but I'm not sure it's that nice at the price of 50,000. No, no, it isn't. All right. Well... I think we will... There's one thing that I want to check. I saw somewhere that you could speak to the ghosts and they would point you at something, but I, I think that might be in Act 5.
good thing they didn't find my stash under the eastern wall. Well, there you go. Sapping Assault. Plus three heavy mace that is necrotic. If it confirms a critical hit while it is under the effect of the Lich's Vampiric Blade spell, the enemy suffers an ability drain to strength and the wielder gets plus one bonus to strength until the end of the encounter. Can stack up to four points. Okay, so this is for the uh, this is for my main character. I'm not using a heavy mace, but uh, it's still useful to... Um, to have the um, uh, oppor option, opportunity, something, something. Anyhow, uh, let's make this uh, sub-episode, since it was basically just a lot of uh, talking with various people. And in the next episode, we will be heading out into the world. I have no idea where, but uh, we will uh, figure that out. Um... Take a quick look at the at the world map. Just see here. I think we want to go to the Temple of the Good Hunt. And possibly also the Ashen Grotto. That's where we need to go for Wuljith. Yeah, we'll go to those two places there. Maybe also to the ruins of Ashbury Hamlet. Uh, I've no idea what is there. Uh, down here is just a primitive altar with reagents, so I don't think I'm going to bother going all the way down there just to get some random loot. So yeah. If you have any questions and or comments, then please do feel free to leave those in the comment section below as per usual. For now, thank you all so much for joining me and I hope to see you all in the next episode.